2 a.m. and all was quiet on the Broxtow front. A car up ahead catches Keith's attention when it nearly clips a parked car's wing mirror. Thought I was going to wait that there. Keith plays catch up to take a closer look. Got a flat tire as well. The car was just in front of us, but I noticed that it had a very deflated tire. And I thought, well, why is he driving like that? You know, does he realise it's deflated? So it was a case of, yeah, I'll put my lights on and have a chat to the driver. The blue flashing lights and police siren seem to have gone unnoticed. So Keith radios the control room. At the moment, it's failing to stop at 45 mile an hour. Yeah, he's got like a, a flat tire. Branching off the main road with one flat tire, it's a rather sluggish pursuit. How's he going? But the driver seems keen to lose Keith. He's turning around, he's going back up Willerton Vale. Still failing to stop. There's no risk, there's no other road users. The speed is 35. When this vehicle started, you know, failing to stop, it came back because I think the vehicle was insured to somebody. It had a, a registered owner and everything just seemed legitimate. So that makes you think then, is it because they're drunk? Have they got drugs on board? Have they just committed something? You kind of just never know until you stop the vehicle and stop the driver and say, what are you doing? In a bid to give cops the slip, the driver puts his foot down. It's up in the speed to 7-0, headed towards Bloom Woods. Now the dodgy driver's burning rubber. Literally. A tire flies off. This dangerous driver is now pushing 70 miles an hour, with one wheel running on rims. Carelessly speeding through red lights. The speed is 9-0. We've got a red ATS at the roundabout, junction of that uh, Toby Carberry. He slowed right down. The dicey driver recklessly cuts in front of a taxi. He's gone left, left, Woolerton Vale. We're at 5 0, Woolerton Vale, still failing to stop. Now he's endangering innocent members of the public. He needs to be stopped fast. An actual set up stinger at the Gondola Public House site. A few miles away, another officer is moving into position, ready to unleash the stinger a strip of metal spikes, which, when rolled into the road, will instantly puncture a car's tires. That's three eight. You've got uh, three hours. And firearms cops join the pursuit, capturing the chase on their dash camera. We've been taken over by the ARVs now, obviously suitably trained. Up ahead, cops with the stinger are lying in wait. Four, six, coming towards you. Can you stand by? Yeah, we can hear him. I'm going to pull the stinger out. The fleeing car drives over the stinger, piercing another tire. A perfect maneuver. Forcing the pursuing armed response vehicle to dodge around the stinger. It's left, left, left. Yeah, for this stop. Now the car is swerving all over the road. I was still traveling at such a high speed. The cops need to keep on the car's tail and be ready to catch the driver. With only two tires left, the driver loses grip of the tarmac and plows into a roundabout. <laughs> Against all odds, the driver makes a run for it and leaps straight over an eight-foot fence. Broxtow's finest is determined to stop him. Keith hotfoots it to the front of the house, where he expects the runner to emerge. I've got one runner in it. He's got a grey hoodie on, uh, black trousers. He's jumped straight over a fence. Doing his lane as well. Yeah, just sit your hospital. We're some distance, but we'll head that way. Oh, where's he gone? Have you seen anyone run through here? Where's he gone then? He's come over this fence. Where's he gone then? He's not got out. He can't have got out. I just don't think he's in these gardens around here. 
It was just silence. There was no cracking of fences, no bushes rustling. Where are you? He can't have got out. We'd have seen him get out that way. He's not got through there quick enough. There's cops on every street corner searching, but the trail's gone cold. In a last-ditch attempt to track him down, hey Keith's called in the cavalry. Dog handler Jen and police dog Quantum. But it's this top corner fence is where he's gone, but I can't see any footprints or anything, so... At the moment, we've got everything contained that we need containing. Uh, so the dog's just going to go and uh, search them gardens now, and hopefully, fingers crossed, that he'll be hiding somewhere and uh, we'll get hold of him. All that's left for Keith to do is listen out and wait. When suddenly... <laughs> Keith hears a commotion in gardens nearby. Shouting from the garden, 129, I believe. Where are you? Keith can't get an answer from the dog handler. Where are you? Are you all right? You can run, but you can't hide from the body cam squad. Are you all right, mate? Uh, 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 you with Quantum on the case, there's no solace for the runaway driver. Oh, you took my arm, please. He'd been bit by the police dog. That's because he was sat down hiding. They found him, told him to stay where he was, and he didn't. He stood up again and come walking towards, the, you know, the dog officer. And uh, unfortunately, he got a little nip to his arm for, for his troubles. All right, you under arrest. All right, you know, for uh, driving dangerously, failing to stop. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have to say anything? 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 An update from Control gives Keith a clue as to why the driver wanted to make a getaway. He's got provisional licence and his last offence was February last year, uh, driving whilst disqualified. See, but he's not disqualified now. <laughs> Just a provisional. Negative, not the out. Right, mate. Also arrested for driving one other than a course with a licence, no short. It's all right, mate. So. The driver's taken to custody with his tail between his legs. 